Welcome back, memory seekers. Today we're embarking on an unforgettable journey across the majestic Menai Strait to the beautiful Isle of Anglesey. Join us as we uncover some enchanting locations that await you on this scenic isle. In this episode, we'll traverse rolling dunes with golden sands, leading us to a forgotten island steeped in ancient legends and love stories. We'll visit the station boasting the longest name in Britain and explore a wonderful woodland nature trail, revealing an abandoned railway in search of the elusive and rare red squirrels. So if you're a nature enthusiast, a history buff, or just craving breathtaking scenery, Anglesey is the perfect destination for you. Get ready to be swept away by the beauty and charm of this remarkable island. The Isle of Anglesey is just off the northwest coast of mainland Wales. It's known for its beaches, nature and ancient sites, and over the next few episodes we hope to share some of its wonders with you. Two famous bridges cross the Menai Strait to enter Anglesey, and we are passing over Britannia Bridge which takes cars on this level and below us a railway track to Holyhead for connections to Ireland by ferry. This however was not always the case. This bridge was built by renowned engineer Robert Stevenson. If you watched our Conwy video you will know he built the first ever tubular railway bridge able to carry a train over the Conwy estuary opening in 1848. The railway needed to reach Holyhead and so his same design was used to build this second railway bridge across the Menai Strait, which was completed in 1850. Sadly, a devastating fire in 1970 means the tubular structure no longer exists and a redesign of the bridge used steel arch supports instead. It was four years before the railway could restart. In 1980, the road level above was added to provide a second way of getting across to the Isle and improving connections. We can see the second bridge that spans the straits from a viewpoint just moments after crossing Britannia Bridge. There is a small car park to stop in. Or for an even closer look, walk from the Waitrose car park down to the banks of the Menai Strait to look up at this fantastic iconic bridge. We'll show you clips from both. For centuries, crossing the Menai Strait was a treacherous endeavour. Ferries battled the strait's unpredictable currents and many boats capsized or ran aground, tragically claiming lives. Even the legendary Admiral Lord Nelson acknowledged the strait's dangers, calling it one of the most perilous stretches of water to navigate. In 1800, Ireland joined the UK through the Act of Union and this route became a key link between London and the crucial port of Holyhead for connections to Ireland, particularly for commuting politicians. In 1818, renowned civil engineer Thomas Telford was commissioned to improve this vital link. He recognised the need for a bridge that wouldn't impede shipping traffic with its tall masts. Telford designed the suspension bridge, then a relatively new technology, its deck would be suspended from massive wrought iron chains, allowing ships to pass freely underneath. The Menai Suspension Bridge opened in 1826, a wonder of its time and the longest suspension bridge ever built at that point. Again in Conwy you can see a similar suspension bridge built by Telford also opening in 1826, following a very similar design but on a smaller scale. We're now on our way to one of Anglesey's best beaches and tidal islands, but just had to stop on the way at the tiny village with the longest name in Britain, which is best seen at the station. Now I'll try my best to say it, here goes. Clamvaya porthgwingeth go gereth weindrobus clantisilio go go goch. The station is a little run down, but everyone comes here to get a photo in front of the famous sign. This was me, Simon, with my sister, doing the same thing some years ago now. If you walk across the station car park, the sign outside the shop is translated into English to help you make some sense of the name.
The shop has a cafe and toilets and lots of trinkets and general tourist souvenirs, so you might find something to take home. The beautiful west coast of Anglesey can be seen at its best at Newborough Beach, a nature lover's paradise and a scenic hiker's dream. No ticket needed. Pay at station on exit. You'll need a car to reach the beach as there's no public transport close by. The automatic gate will record your number plate and entrance time so no ticket is given. You'll pay on exit with a card. There is a large car park with toilets, foot showers, free water and spaces for camper vans, so better facilities than most places. There are many trails to take, whether walking, cycling or even horse riding if you happen to have brought your horse. You are best looking at this website to choose a trail, search Newborough Beach. We'll be heading for Hlandoin Island and recommend checking tidal times so you know when you can get to the island and back before you start your walk. They do put up signs as well. The Corsican pine trees that make up Newborough Forest were planted between 1947 and 65 to provide timber and to stabilise the shifting sand dunes. This is a nature reserve and brimming with plants and animals. You might see the rare red squirrels on one of the trails. We didn't see them on our route but found the cute elusive creatures in another part of Anglesey on another beautiful hike, so stay tuned, that's coming later. Our walk will take about 30 to 45 minutes at a gentle walking pace to reach the furthest point on the island, and we're in for a treat. It's worth noting that you can only bring your dog on to many beaches in Wales at certain times of the year, so do check the websites for when that is and look out for the signage. We've crossed onto the island and the handy signage will give you some information and routes to take. Steeped in myth and legend, this enchanting island boasts a rich history intertwined with religion, maritime dangers and even a touch of romance. The island's name itself, Clandoin, translates to the Church of St. Doinwen. Doinwen, the Welsh patron saint of lovers, is said to have established a religious settlement here, possibly a nunnery sometime in the 5th century. The ruins of St. Doinwen's church stands as a testament to this religious history. Recent excavations even uncovered traces of structures predating the church, hinting at an even older spiritual significance of the island. The island became a popular pilgrimage destination for those seeking love or fearing betrayal. A well was believed to hold the power to test a lover's faithfulness through the behaviour of eels dwelling within. Offerings were left at shrines and during Tudor times, the island's popularity as a pilgrimage site made it the wealthiest religious centre in the area. Given its strategic location near the entrance of the Menai Strait, Clandoin Island played a crucial role in maritime navigation. The increasing importance of shipping slate from nearby ports in the 19th century necessitated better guidance for ships. A beacon was built to serve this purpose followed by a more substantial lighthouse, 
modelled on Anglesey's windmills in 1845. These lighthouses, along with cottages for pilots, would guide ships through the treacherous waters and still stand as a reminder of the island's maritime significance. Having completed a really enjoyable walk, let's head right up to the northwest coast to Holy Island, attached to the larger Isle of Anglesey and named such for its high concentrate of religious sites. We are however here to see the striking lighthouse popular with visitors. The Southstack Lighthouse has been guiding ships since 1809. It's very close to Hollyhead, the gateway to Ireland and a busy port. The beacon is still invaluable to warn vessels of the deadly rocks below even with today's modern GPS. A large car park attached to the RSPB Wildlife Centre is the closest you can get before needing to walk. This area is a nature reserve, so even if you're not interested in the lighthouse, you might like a walk across the rolling heathland and rugged sea cliffs. In the distance, notice a white tower. This castle-like folly was commissioned by William Stanley for his wife Ellen and built in 1867. He was a renowned Minister of Parliament, a large landowner here and an archaeologist. The RSPB purchased the 700 acres in 1980 and refurbished it for observing the birds. Visitors to the centre can walk down to it for free. The lighthouse is perched on a tiny inlet attached to Holy Island with a footbridge. Trinity House was responsible for building it in 1809, a centuries-old charity dedicated to protecting shipping and seafarers which is still going strong today, maintaining 65 lighthouses and supporting ageing mariners amongst its many activities. For a £10 fee you can walk down and up the steps, 400 of them, to explore the historic buildings and learn how it was built and maintained in this difficult location. The tour even includes climbing the 28 metre tall lighthouse tower. Our legs didn't feel up to the strain, so we stuck to the sea cliffs. Until 1828, before the footbridge was added, the only means of crossing the deep water channel to the island was via a wicker basket suspended on a rope cable. The light was lit nightly with oil lanterns and keepers stayed on the inlet, sometimes with their families, but by 1935 it was deemed unsafe for young children 
and so only the keepers could stay rotating one month on, one month off. In 1909, an early form of incandescent light was installed, and electrification came in 1938. It wasn't until 1983 that the lighthouse was automated, meaning that the last lighthouse keeper was withdrawn from the site. We've only taken a short walk across the sea cliffs and headland, but you could spend a whole day here. A vital breeding ground for guillemots, razorbills and puffins in spring, there are also coves and sandy beaches to explore on Holy Island, so what we've shown you is just a taste of this area. Whilst Holyhead is the largest town in Anglesey, Beaumaris is probably the most famous and historic, home to the greatest castle never built, and the last of the royal strongholds created by Edward I in Wales. With its charming streets for shopping, beautiful historic architecture, waterfront location with a pier, and the creepy Victorian jail that will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, it's a great place to spend a day. We'll be sharing a full tour of Beaumaris next week in a separate video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. We are now searching for the elusive red squirrels, an endangered species in Britain but thriving on Anglesey. Our walk begins in the car park beside St Singar's Church on the outskirts of Clangevny. This is the entrance to the Nanti Pandi, also known as the Dingle Nature Reserve. It is said to be one of the best places on the Isle to be able to see these shy and threatened rodents. The 40-acre wooded valley has been given a helping hand by the community and an aid grant to provide a well-maintained boardwalk with a tarmac path that winds through the lush woods alongside the River Knevy, great for a relaxing stroll amongst nature. The abandoned railway tracks we see are what is left of the Anglesey Central Railway, a 17.5 mile line built to better connect the island of Anglesey, particularly the inland areas and the port of Amloch. Freight services began in 1864 with passenger services a year later, but the entire line was not open to the port until 1867. All stations on the line were closed to passengers in 1964 as part of the Dr. Beeching cuts which saw many of Britain's branch lines closed. Freight continued until 1993 and most of the track has now disappeared, but here at Nanti Pandi you can still see part of the line that leads into the town. Red squirrels were once widespread through Britain but now they are rare due to the introduction of the grey squirrels from North America in 1867. The grey often carries a virus called squirrel pox, which they rarely die from but is deadly for the red squirrel. That combined with outcompeting native reds for resources has meant the little red rodent is now on the endangered list. We had a brief sighting early into our walk which gave us encouragement to keep searching. Anglesey has been successful in humanely regulating the grey squirrel population over the last 20 years so that the reds have a haven to thrive in on the isle and increasing the population, giving it a fighting chance against extinction in Britain. Apparently many variations of the red squirrel have been brought here, some from Scotland and others from Europe.
A local chap named Will comes to feed the squirrels twice a day, and we were lucky to be here between three and four when he does his afternoon feed. He has earned the trust of the squirrels over a long period, so they come very close. He provides an interesting talk to visitors on the boardwalk, all in his spare time and for his love of the squirrels. This is your best opportunity to see them face to face. It's also worth noting you should not try to feed them yourselves, as he has the right feed and quantity for them, which he hides in places so they can forage for it. If visitors were to try as well, it could disrupt their natural diet and foraging behaviour. They're pretty tricky characters to film. Before you know it, it's all over and they disappear. This is roughly the anti-clockwise route we took in the woodlands and I think the feeding took place about here but I can't be sure. Even if you're not lucky enough to see the squirrels, this nature reserve is a lovely place to take a relaxing walk for an hour or so and the route we took means you are always seeing something new right up until you arrive back at the car park. We'll end our look at these wonderful places in Anglesey at the Ship Inn at Red Wolf Bay. We happened to drive nearby and it looked a lovely quiet spot for a drink. All the things we've shown you in this video took place over two days in Anglesey and we really have only scraped the surface on the beautiful places you can visit. We hope you discover more. Don't forget next time we're still in Anglesey digging up the history of this impressive castle enjoying the shopping and historic architecture of Beaumaris and taking a creepy walk around the Victorian jail. So do join us again on the channel. Thanks so much for watching The Memory Seekers.